The supposed cause for all this criminality is the coastal gasling pipeline in British Columbia. What's so odd about that is Justin Trudeau's incident response group, this crisis management team, doesn't have a single British Columbian on it. Joining us now from Victoria is our friend Aaron Gunn, who runs Canada Strong and Proud, and you can find out more about him at AaronGunn.ca. Aaron, great to see you. We love checking in with you. You give us the other side of the story. I'll always remember your coverage of when Victoria City Hall tore down the John A., the Sir John A. Macdonald statue, and I was so glad you were there to capture that. This is another form of vandalism, but it's a bit more serious. Tell me about the protests that you can see with your eyes um, against nominally this coastal gasoline pipeline, but really against the entire industrial economy. Tell me what you see and who's behind it. Well, there's been, uh, well, thanks for having me, Ezra. There's been protests and just general lawlessness across this province for the better part of a week or, or even two weeks now. Uh, on last Tuesday there, that would have been the February 10th, I think, uh, 10th or 11th, uh, they blockaded the legislature here in British Columbia, here in Victoria, prevented elected MLAs from, from sitting during the throne speech. They blockaded bridges and intersections throughout Victoria and Vancouver. They tried to uh, blockade a stretch of highway up in Courtney, but that didn't go so well for them. And uh, they blockaded rail lines as well in the lower mainland and up in, in northern BC. And what's going on here? I was on the ground, so I actually got to, to see and attempted to speak with some of these individuals. And it's really, they're very well organized. Uh, they're obviously, it's part of that same ENGO movement that, uh, you know, they have Excel spreadsheets set up and they have their 200 uh, kind of uh, reoccurring protesters that's definitely led by a group of paid protesters that are out just trying to cause absolute havoc. And the police, or at least the police leadership and political leadership are basically letting them get away with it. So uh, even when you do get an injunction, the police actually do enforce the injunction. It's kind of like you're playing a, a whack in a legal blockade. They, one goes away and another one just springs up somewhere else. So it's been a little chaotic. And uh, most recently, they actually tried to, uh, to uh, blockade the premier of British Columbia's personal residence and, uh, and, and make a citizen's arrest on him, which is obviously a new level of craziness. And it's my understanding that the police actually uh, did make some arrests uh, uh, in this uh, particular case. You know, uh, I didn't think of it until I just heard you say it again. When they blockaded the B.C. legislature, I thought that was crazy. Um, I thought the way they harassed political politicians of every stripe, they blockaded the handicap zone. But just when I heard you say it again, it made me remember something that I learned in law school more than 20 years ago, and I just Googled it on my phone. Let me read to you Section 51 of the Criminal Code. I forgot it until the second you said it. Aaron, it's very short. It's only one sentence long. It's called Intimidating Parliament or Legislature. It's a specific crime in the Criminal Code. It's so short, I'll read it to you right now. Section 51. Everyone who does an act of violence in order to intimidate parliament or the legislator of a, legislature of a province is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 14 years. So that's a serious crime. I don't think I saw any violence at the legislature, but any violence at all. So a sit-in wouldn't qualify, a protest wouldn't qualify, maybe blocking a door wouldn't qualify, but you shove one, someone, you push someone, you threaten someone, you escalate it from protest to violence, that's a 14-year prison term. These people are trying to intimidate our very rule of law. They are. They're, well, they're trying to intimidate uh, our very country. They're trying to bring it to its knees. That's why, I mean, they're going after choke points on purpose, uh, like the rail blockade in Ontario, the blockade of the, the commuter rail here in uh, the lower mainland, just outside Vancouver. And uh, really the two bridges, which are the only two emergency routes they blockaded at the same time that enter into uh, downtown Victoria from uh, Vic West and Esquimalt. So, um, I mean, they're going after, this is their entire narrative, that the entire country is illegitimate, that uh, Canada is a bad, bad place. You know, the hashtag that they're using is hashtag shut down Canada. So they're not exactly being shy about what they're trying to accomplish here. 
And to be honest, Ezra, one of the most important things I think for your viewers to, to realize and understand is that this is just a warm up act for them. This is the coastal gas link pipeline. Not a lot has been talked about it. It's supported by all the First Nation bands. It's natural gas. This is a warm up for TMX, Trans Mountain Expansion. Uh, they are just, they're warming up for the, the level of, you think it's bad now, wait to the TMX, which is a, a oil pipeline that terminates basically in downtown Vancouver. Wait until uh, they direct the protest to that when they start actually building that portion of it. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.